Star Wars has been around for a while. Since 1977, 46 years ago, our beloved franchise has made an impact on the lives of both old and new viewers, readers, gamers, and to get a little cheesy, dreamers. Grandparents show their grandkids. Parents show their children. Friends show their friends. Each introducing a new generation to the sprawling saga, the epic tale that is Star Wars. And each new generation Star Wars is different from the previous generation Star Wars. It's an ever-evolving adventure, constantly being redefined as it should be. This video is sponsored by Fan Home and their Star Wars Millennium Falcon build-up model. The Fan Home Millennium Falcon model is an official replica of the physical prop that was used for filming, reproduced to the same scale and with highly accurate exterior details. Thanks to its metal and abs parts, the model is suitable for both beginner and expert modelers and offers a superb degree of realism. When you subscribe to Fan Home, you receive monthly parts for the Millennium Falcon model, along with exclusive magazines and subscriber gifts, such as a mug, a hat, a binder, and a die-cast Millennium Falcon. So every month, you'll piece together the Falcon, and by the end of your subscription, you will have an authentic, official replica model of the prop used in Star Wars. With the holidays coming up, this is a gift that keeps on giving all year round. If you're a parent or a grandparent, Putting this model together can be something to look forward to every month with the kids in your life. Sharing that love of Star Wars that I mentioned at the beginning of the video in a really unique way. The Millennium Falcon is the coolest hunk of junk in the galaxy and to be able to build it, to be able to have something this detailed and authentic is definitely something worth sharing. Now for my viewers, I'm going to toss a link and a code in the video description below that will bring you directly to the product. Make sure you use that link. Make sure you use that code. Enjoy a piece of Star Wars every month by subscribing to Fan Home's Millennium Falcon build-up model. When I started this channel in 2011, it was difficult to find a prequel fan. But as the years went on and the kids who were fans of those movies began to grow up and have a voice on the internet, the wave of prequel love grew and grew. And before you knew it, it seemed like most people were fans of those movies. To me, that's an important lesson. It was interesting to witness. It was proof of the generational ebb and flow of Star Wars, something that, from my experience, most older fans of Star Wars rejected, ultimately became beloved. You could say it was always beloved, but it just wasn't vocalized as loudly because the majority of prequel fans were too young to jump into the conversation at the time. In 1977, when the first Star Wars movie debuted, it was a revelation. Kids lined up around the block to witness movie history and be transported on a fun, energetic, and imaginative journey. It was unlike anything they'd ever seen before. And then they waited three years to see the next Star Wars movie, and after that, they waited three more years to see the conclusion of this grand adventure. Six years of storytelling experienced by a generation. And then after 1983, with the release of Return of the Jedi, the world had to wait 16 years for the next Star Wars story on the big screen to be released in 1999. The Phantom Menace was not well received, on the surface, at least. I was 13 when that movie came out. My friends and I didn't really care for it. The comic book shop chatter we heard was extremely negative. The internet babble we saw during the release of all three prequel movies had similar feelings. But all the while, a younger generation swung their lightsaber tree branches like we did when we were kids. They threw pinecone thermal detonators like we did when we were kids. But instead of being Luke, they were Anakin. Instead of pretending to be Darth Vader, they were Darth Maul. They played their Star Wars like we played our Star Wars. And while those three films didn't hit a lot of the folks of my generation, they certainly had an impact on the generation after mine and beyond. It seems as though the apparent and visible appreciation of a lot of Star Wars is delayed. The prequels, the Clone Wars, they appeal to a different Star Wars fan. A lot of us were set in our ways. We wanted, you know, for all intents and purposes, more of the same. We didn't want to deviate too much. 
So our disappointment was almost guaranteed, and in a way, self-inflicted. When the second generation of Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 came out in 2015 and 2017, one of the biggest complaints was a lack of prequel era content. Battlefront 1 featured none of it. And it is telling that when Battlefront 2 came out, and all of the updates were released in the years after, they featured an abundance of prequel era content. Prequel fans were the people playing these games. That generation were the gamers with their fingers on the mouse and keyboard and controller. So it only made sense to appeal to that side of the fandom, that generation of Star Wars fans who were now very vocal. Will this be the same for the sequel era trilogy? Will this generational ebb and flow happen again? Prequel fans, not all of them of course, this is a generalization of the most outspoken among them that we hear from all the time, but prequel fans experienced a similar level of disappointment that we did when the prequels came out. They didn't seem to like the new stuff. They raged on the internet and took up arms against the new Star Wars. So many of the complaints about the new Star Wars are very reminiscent of the complaints I heard and leveled even when the prequels came out. It's very interesting to see this happen to a generation who grew up defending what they loved against an onslaught of naysayers. I feel like the appreciation for the sequel trilogy, that generational bounce, is already beginning to happen. As the dust settles and the rage begins to die down, new voices rise to the top in defense of their generation Star Wars. It might be an uphill battle at first, but as more kids grow up and hop on the internet, that voice will grow louder and louder, and eventually, as was the case with the prequel fans, the naysayers will seemingly be in the minority. It's a pattern. It's cyclical. Those of us old enough to remember have seen it before, and it's great. New Star Wars for new generations. Kids experiencing something new and appreciating something new and different stories with new and unique characters that appeal to them. It's healthy to recognize this pattern. And as a parent, you begin to appreciate the pattern even more. My kid doesn't have to like my Star Wars, but if there is a Star Wars that she likes, that appeals to her, that speaks to her generation, that she can find enjoyment and love for, then that is all that matters.